reading tonight from uh, a verse of scripture, a very familiar portion of scripture actually, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. Let me say how delightful it is to have everybody here on midweek service. Thank you for joining us. Thrilled that you could make it. Happy for the blessings of the Lord. Great services this weekend. And uh, the last couple of weekends have been paramount here and have been wonderful. Looking forward to something really amazing this weekend. How many enjoyed Brother Edwards this last Sunday? A great work from God. They enjoyed being in service. It was completely unrehearsed. And we were happy that they were coming through this way and were able to be in service with us. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. The word of the Lord says this. For many are called, but few are chosen. And we want to focus tonight on the aspect of the called. For many are called. And we're going to look at the criterion for calling tonight. And what it's, what, you know, what God has for each of us. And then... We're going to look at what we have toward God in the kingdom and what we can offer Him. Yes. Let's pray over what I'd like to talk about tonight, the pursuit of our calling. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to be among your children tonight. To speak to those whom you love with all of your heart, gave your life a ransom for. I don't take it lightly tonight to address the children of the Almighty God. I want to do my part to be bound faithful. I also want you to anoint these lips of clay with words of wisdom to speak from your precious word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I'm a firm believer that every individual here who's obeyed the plan of salvation found in Acts the second chapter has been called of God. The Bible tells us plainly in Acts chapter 2 verse 39, Brother Morrow, you know this and you can quote it. After the day of Pentecost had come, they were all filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the upper room. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire set upon each of them. As a rushing mighty wind, the sound of a whirlwind came through the house. Filled all that were in the house where they were sitting. And then the Bible says, for this promise, after the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Ghost had come. For this promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I believe that there's no way to come to God without His leading us to Him. Or His leadership in our lives toward making a right choice from turning away from a life of sin. Or a life of heartache. Or a life of promiscuity. Or a life of evil. Or whatever you might want to call it. I believe it's the leadership of God's Spirit that deals with men, strives with men, in an effort so that we might know Him in a life that's more abundant. I believe that whether you recognize it being the call of God, that thing which causes you to say, you know, I need a change in my life. I need to turn from these things. Hey, this is not very fruitful, not very productive. I'm not getting very far with what I'm trying to do here. I think what happens, Brother Mo, is that, is that God's Spirit, regardless of where we are in the deepest depths, <laughs> or whether we're popular or unpopular, whether we're good or bad or indifferent or fat, skinny or pretty or ugly, when God starts dealing with a person, He starts dealing with a person, He usually just starts dealing with your heart. And He wants you to have a change of heart. And then what he does, whether you recognize it or not, when you start feeling like, you know, I, 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 this, this is not working out for me. This life of kicking against the bricks and living out in sin and, and doing things I know that are not right. Things that are defiling this, this temple that is designed to be the temple of his Holy Spirit. Those things that defile that thing. When we start thinking maybe it's better for us not to partake of this. Maybe it's better for us not to take this on or to ingest this or to do these things that would defile this holy tabernacle. That, whether you recognize it or not, is the call of God on your life calling you.
you to a better life. Calling you to a life that's eternal with him instead of a life in eternal darkness. That is the call of God. Acts 2 and 39 speaks of the promise. What is the promise? Jesus told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and tarry there. And you will be endued with power from on high. And, and, and it was just 50 days after that time that the Lord filled all that were in the house with the gift of his spirit. It was a gift that was the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost. They received a precious gift. You know, I believe to whom uh, God calls, he has a gift waiting on them if we'll be obedient and respond. How many of you ever felt like, whew, once you came out of a, a world that was a whirlwind on fire, and you came into the peace that passes understanding, that that little bit of peace, that little bit of joy you hadn't felt in years, that little bit of being able to sleep at night and not worry about tomorrow was a gift. Thank you. Woo! It was a gift. I don't know how many of you worry about going to hell. But you know what? When I was a kid, preachers preached hell and they preached it hot. <laughs> when I was a kid, preachers preached about a literal burning fire. Right. And they preached it so hot I could smell my toenails. Right. Smoking. <laughs> they would preach a literal place of torment. A place that those that denied God or who had been called by God or turned away from their calling or defiled the tabernacle of God and would not come to God in submission to Him when He had called them under repentance, called them under the gift of the Holy Ghost. There was a hell and it was hot and it was real. But you won't hear much about it anymore. Oh, we talk about heaven every once in a while. Nobody wants to hear about hell. Most people think they're going through enough hell right now on earth that they don't want to hear about something worse than that. Right? Life could be hell. Just surviving this life can be hell on earth. But I want you to take this a little, a little bit further when the Bible tells us not to fear him that can destroy the body only, but to fear him that can destroy the body and the soul. There comes a time that we're going to stand at a place called judgment. Everybody would like for us to think it's going to be a place called grace. But by the time we get to judgment, the dispensation of grace will be over. Thank God we currently live in the greatest dispensation that humanity has ever known. The door of grace is open. We have the grace of God. We have the peace that passes understanding. The joy of the Lord which is unspeakable and full of glory. The door of grace stands wide open for whosoever will today. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've partaken of. It doesn't matter what your mindset. It doesn't whether you even have your mind on God or not. Or whether you're even trying to fulfill His calling. The door of grace remains open tonight. And I'm thankful for it. You know why, Sister Bradley? Because the day the door of grace shuts. The Bible hearkens it unto, like it to the same day back in Genesis. When for 120 years, Noah preached that same message he had preached his, his entire ministry. Get in the boat for 120 years. And there were people who laughed and scorned and mocked. And the Bible said that every man in that day did what was right in his own eyes. My Lord, does that sound like today? Does that sound just like today? You know, people will just defy you if you tell them they have to do anything. I don't know. I haven't talked with our teachers that teach in public school, but I'm sure you are greatly challenged today if you try to set up some guidelines and rules and parameters as an adult, male or female, in your classroom with little kids that have been told by their Parents, now I don't know whether they're millennials or X factor or Generation X or Generation Triple X. I don't know. 
But a lot of parents tell their kids, question everything. Question everything. I will tell you this. If you're raising your little son or daughter to question everything, there will come a day, honey, when you tell them something that they need to do or they must do, and they will stand up and look you dead in the eye and question why. And I'll tell you this. Even when you give them the answer, if you taught them, little darlings, from the cradle to that time that they have to question everything, you will have no authority before long. And you will not be the parent. And you will not be the head. And you will not be able to lead them into all truth. Who a pastor in there? Pastor. Ain't been enough water to start that topic. <laughs> now I will tell you this. Now I, I know that the children need more than than this, because saints, the children of God, need more than this. Children need more than. Because I said so. But I will tell you this, children of God, we got something better than because I said so tonight. We got something here, Sister Courtney, that says because he said so. And unless he is truly the Lord and he is seated in the proper place in your life, which the Lord will not be seated anywhere but in the proper place. Unless he is upon the throne, he cannot be Lord. I said the throne, not a throne in your life. Not to be there along with other gods you've erected or you are obedient to. He has to sit on the throne of your life. You know what, just as he has the answers to the tough questions in life, parents and grandparents today are challenged to answer tough questions. But you know what? When you need the answer, Adrian, you can always go back to the textbook. I said you can go back to the benchmark standard and say, the word of the Lord says this. And you know what? There's something we need to be teaching our children and our families is that all the promises of God are both yea and amen. And it is impossible for God to lie. And God is every bit as good as his word. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that God is the eternal word. You heard a mic drop? Bible drop that, baby. He's either Lord and master or you or something else has become Lord. And master. I believe that when we start feeling the tug, we start feeling the, the nurturing, we start feeling the love of God calling us out darkness, the Bible says, into his marvelous light. When we start feeling that call, God has an eternal design. Uh, David said that that, that 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 from his mother's womb that he was he was corrupted, filthy. And that he was in need of a savior from the womb. But I do believe this. That God knew when David was conceived, he would one day slay a giant. Not only him, but all of his brothers. He not only knew when he was conceived and born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That he would one day answer the call of God. And he would one day be the king of Israel. And that he would one day... Be the ruler of the greatest nation on earth and the greatest people who ever lived. Because when God calls you, he has a design for your calling. I know that there are people here tonight that have various skills, talents, and abilities. Some of you can get up here and talk the fuzz off of a peach. Some of you can sing till the cows come home. Some of you have the ability to work on machines and computers and tools and equipment. And some of you have the ability to organize and and put programs together and do great exploits. But every aspect that you have been given, I want you to understand what I just said. You have been given. It's 
something that God longs to utilize by calling you out of darkness into a place that you can stand in the midst of the light and use every aspect of those things he's gifted you with that is called your calling. There's never been a greater time while the door of grace is open to pursue your calling. Now, if you feel strong tonight, if you want to take a step of faith tonight, the Bible said we start taking steps like small as a grain of mustard seed. So I'm going to give us all the opportunity to step out by faith tonight. No, you don't have to get up. You don't have to go anywhere. You know, I'm not going to ruffle your feathers like that. Just turn to somebody close by and say, I am going to fulfill my calling. I am going to fulfill my calling. Cheyenne, Naomi, I am going to fulfill my calling. Sister Teague, I am going to fulfill my calling. First of all, because... Without God, I know of nothing. I don't have any talent, skill, or ability that to impress God. But I know if I will give it to Him, coupled by His power, His Spirit, His anointing, whatever it is that I have, no matter how great, how small. Let me tell you something. There was a woman in the Bible, and, and, and it must have been her talent to make a cake. Because the Bible said God came to the prophet and said, I want you to rise up. Go over here to Sarah I got a woman over there that's going to take care of you. And he walks up on this woman and her son. And they're picking up some sticks so the boy can make a little old fire. And he said, what are y'all doing? She said, we're picking up some sticks. We're fixing to go in and make a fire. And I'm going to bake a cake. Do you think it's circumstantial that God called that woman to bake a cake? For the man of God. She said we have not much but a little more so. And the prophet said nevertheless. Make me a cake first. Woo. Said Sharon. I know this about you. You are gifted. You know why? Because I've had your cake. <laughs> God ever tells me to rise up, come over to your house. I don't care if you ain't got but two spoonfuls of flour and a pinch of salt. I believe this. When you use what God has equipped you with, you will be anointed. You will be cared for. You will be blessed. The Bible went, said when she did what she had to do with that the crews of all didn't fail or the meal bearer fell for three and a half years. Y'all think about that. God made a way just because she did what she could do. Everybody here needs to say, what could I do? And you don't have to say it out loud, but what more could I do? There's some people here think you're already doing you know so much, and, and you are. You shouldn't be so gifted. I can just sit down right now and let that marinate for about 30 minutes. Do you regret being important to the kingdom? Have you ever been bitter? Oh, I have. I've questioned God and said, Oh, God. I'm tired. God, I'm weary. I know you, you that, 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 that I can do this, but I'm so tired. Lord, I'm so weary. Lord, I don't know. I, 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 I got it coming at me from every angle. You know what? I know there's people in this church who feel the same way because great are your gifts. Great are your talents. Great are your abilities. But I will tell you this about God. He makes no mistakes. He knows exactly what we are capable of. And the Bible says that he would not place any more upon us 
than we are able to bear. That if in the time of temptation, in the time of struggle, that he would not make a way of escape. Hallelujah. What separates us from the called and the chosen? And I'm fixing to finish up with this. Two ingredients. James chapter 2, verse 17 says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. You can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't get up and execute that which you have faith for, then you can just be the most faithful person in the world, but yet the most powerless individual who ever came to the kingdom. To have faith without works is to be powerless. But to put some action to your faith is to be the most powerful in the kingdom. There are two types of faith. Most men have only one type of faith. And that's faith in God. You know, it's not hard for me to have faith in God because Philip, he has a good track record. I'll rephrase that. He has an impeccable, flawless track record. It's easy to have faith uh, in someone who's never lost a battle. It's easy to have faith in someone who's never uh, lost a war. It's easy to have faith in someone who does exactly what they say they're going to do every time they say it. It's easy to have faith in someone who tells his prophet to tell the, uh, the, the, the Naaman, the captain of the guard, go dip seven times in a muddy river and you come forth clean, and he does. It's easy to have faith in someone that will, uh, the lepers cry out on the road to Jerusalem, and he says, go and show yourself to the priest, and every one of them are healed and cleansed. It's easy to have faith in something like that. All of us know what it's like to have that type of faith. Faith in God. To be chosen, we must yet have another kind of faith. You say, I didn't know there was another kind of faith. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You've got to have faith in God. I believe that's an elementary part of pleasing God. They said, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. So there you go. There is the aspect of of pleasing God, having faith in God. But I'm going to requote that scripture. It doesn't say what you think it might say. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. It doesn't say, but without faith in God, it's impossible to please God. That's a misquote altogether. I said you there's two kinds of faith. But without faith, I said you can have all the faith in the world. If you don't have no works, it's dead. The other kind of faith you've got to have is not only faith in God, but faith in your calling. Faith in yourself. We can just call it what the world calls it, self-confidence or self-faith. Or faith in oneself. I have met many gifted people that could do this or that. And if you prod them and pry and you pull on them every once in a while, you might see a cameo appearance, uh, some glimmer of what their gifts or their talents are. But you know what it is in the fact that they don't have faith in God is they don't have any faith in themselves and the calling of God in their life. Now we'll quit right there and we need to think about that. Think about it. For us to be gifted and someone call upon us, namely the Lord, the people in the church, the people doing the work of God, the people that are needing help in the kingdom of God. And for us to say, oh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I can't do that. No, no, no. Yeah, please get somebody else. Oh, oh no, no. I, I'm, not, I'm not really, I'm not as good as this one. I'm not as good as that one. Let me tell you something. God don't care if you're as good as this one or as good as that one. He just wants to know, will you fulfill the calling that he's put on your life instead of the calling of comparison that you've placed on somebody else's ministry? I can do this, I can do that, but 
please don't don't call me. You know, somebody, somebody else can do that. Yeah. Somebody else can do that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get out where the rubber meets the road. I'm going to fold up my notes now. <laughs> Take my last drink of water here tonight. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Got to rephrase that. <laughs> Got to rephrase that. <laughs> Take up space and breathe other people's air that are really anointed. <laughs> Do the work for God. Warming the bitch. However, when we say, oh no, no, please somebody else. No, I, I really I can't. You're saying, oh no, oh no, God doesn't know what he's doing. God's stupid. He's an idiot. For calling me, yeah. he's dumb. He don't really know what I what I can do, what I can't do. He doesn't understand how bad he's evil, secrecy. He just God's kind of slipping. He's really not very smart when it comes to uh, my design, you know, and what I'm able to do, honey. Mm. The very hair on your head right. is yes. no. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That he knows you. And he knows me, and he knows what we're capable of, and he knows what he's placed in our heart, and he knows what we're able to do. And sometimes, until we get out and start doing what God wants us to do by faith, we'll never know what we're able to do. Right. Right. Tell you what, there ain't one person in here that would stand up and say to the Lord's face, You're stupid. Matter of fact, there's hardly one here. I think we possibly even stand in His presence. Yes. Everywhere in the Bible, where they ever, the prophets ever saw the Lord, they said they fell as dead men. Their bodies fell as dead men before yes. Him. Their faces, I say, as that I was unable to even lift my eyes from off the ground to behold His glory. That His face shone so brightly. It shone as bright as the face of the sun. Say, nobody in here would question the divine providence and the calling of God straight to God's face, but we would we would do it all the time. All the time. If we're challenged or asked or if we're if we're needed sometimes we'll no, no please, you know, no, 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 please somebody else. First of all, there's a network of the kingdom. The Spirit of the Lord is the same Spirit in every one of us. There's not like uh, Sister Latasha has some Spirit of God, and then I have another Spirit of God, and Courtney has another Spirit of God, and, and Brooke has another Spirit of God. No, if you have the Spirit of God, it's all the same Spirit of God. And it's a network. And it works together as part of the one body of Christ. So if God speaks to one member of the body of Christ, it should bear witness with other members of the body of Christ because we're all part of one body having many members being fitly framed together. So when the Lord starts dealing with one part of the body of Christ that has an option to come to you and say it's time to fulfill your calling, there should be something rise up in you if you have that self-same spirit that says this is my time, this is my hour, it's the moment I've been waiting. I don't have a lot of self-confidence, a lot of self-faith, but I've got faith as a grain of mustard seed that who God calls, He is able to equip. The correct answer to the question is this. Yes, I will try it. Yes, I will do it. It might not be the very best to begin with, but I will give it my very best try because remember, honey, you're not doing it for me. And you're not doing it for anybody in the church. You are doing it for a man that has nail scarred hands. And he had a crown put on his head. And he died that we might have life. And we might have it more abundantly. So when we're called, Brother Casey, 
I remember when you first started playing the drums. Oh, Lord. You were very good. Very good back then. And we knew this. When you started, you were good. But we never knew yeah. how great and how gifted and how anointed and how faithful you would become. It's because the Bible says to Audra, when you're asked to preach a conference and you will be asked to preach many, you just say, I, I, I don't know, but I, I'll try. I'll give it my best. I want to I wanna honor the Lord. I heard you speak for the first time. It was good. It was really good. And we knew it was good. But oh man. Whew, there have been times. That I thought man I don't know how it gets any greater. Than this. I came to you tonight. Because I love you. And this world is so in need. Of people. Who will just say yes. To their calling and just step out by faith and and and, and you you know we, we don't all hit the, the, the a home run every time we come up to bat but you know what really ball games aren't won by home runs they're made by simple base hits just get on base just get on base so I, I, I'm gonna tell you tonight if you're gonna pursue your calling you might have a breakout moment. And there might be an evangelist among us that we don't even know about. And, and you answer the call in the midnight hour and come and say, I, I feel it's, it's time for me to go travel across the United States and start preaching. I'm here to tell you what. If it is time, God will make a way and you will go across the United States. You, you will start preaching. But it starts with just simply saying, okay. Instead of saying, Lord, you're dumb for asking me. Lord, you're dumb for calling me. Lord, you, you're stupid. That's crazy. Uh-uh. No, I don't want that to ever cross your mind again. And nobody else. There'll be people here who will never forget me saying that. But you don't ever have to mean that, design that, or frame those words from your lips by saying, no, no, please, no. Somebody else, not me. Whom God calls, he makes able. Would you stand with me? He makes able. You say, well, I, I just, to be fair, I, I just don't need the spotlight. I don't, I don't need to be recognized. I don't need to, to be out front. I don't need to be a leader. When in reality, without people in the spotlight, Without people to take lead. Without people to one day stand before others and say, this is the way. Walk you therein. This church is doomed. Sure. I'll ask you this. There'll come a day that I won't be here. I hope that's a long time from now. It almost happened a minute ago when I said it in my last drink of water. Who among you will say, Brother Hudson did this for a long time, but we're still here. We're going to still keep having church. We still have little ones that need to know the truth of the gospel. We still have a youth group that needs to hear the truth of baptism and repentance and receiving the Holy Ghost. We still have young families and elders in this church that are called of God and we must we must travel on. Would you close your eyes with me for just a moment? Lord Jesus. I stand here tonight. Lord, and, 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 and I know that I speak for someone here that's saying, I, Lord, I, I really don't know what you want me to do. I really don't know what my calling is. Well, if you feel that way, I want you to begin to pray right now, right at this very moment. Now, Lord, reveal to me that which you would have me to do. Reveal to me that area of the kingdom that you want me to be active in. Reveal to me, Lord, that which you want me to be a part of.
Now, we'll tell you this. God will never tell you something, lean on you, or call you to do something that is impossible for you to do. You just got to have faith that it will come to pass. Remember, there's faith in God and then there's faith in you. I pray tonight for self-confidence. I pray tonight for a little bit of faith in oneself. I pray tonight for value in one's life, value in one's talent, value in one's ability, so that we can take that which God has trusted us with and maximize it for the glory of God. Help us, Lord. Rachel, would you sing tonight? I'm sure she know the words. If you can use anything, Lord. Would this be you tonight? Would this be you for just a moment? Would you just, would you just submit yourself for a minute? If you can use. 